عن أنس رضي الله عنه قال سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول من كانت الآخرة همه جعل الله غناه في قلبه وجمع له شمله وأتته الدنيا وهي راغمة ومن كانت الدنيا همه جعل الله فقره بين عينيه وفرق عليه شمله ولم يأته من الدنيا إلا ما قدر له On the authority of Anas ibn Malik رضي الله عنه He says I heard the messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم say He whose concern is the he whose concern is the hereafter, Allah will place His prosperity in His heart, and gather for Him His affairs, and the world comes to Him subdued. And he whose concern is the world, the dunya, Allah places His poverty before His eyes, and disperses for Him His affairs. and will receive nothing from the world except what was decreed for him. My dear respected brothers and sisters, <clears throat> there is no human being on the face of this planet who is not driven and motivated to achieve success. People's notions of success differ and vary greatly. These successes are measured by the accomplishment of certain objectives. Fulfilling these objectives becomes the subject of one's effort and endeavor. They occupy their thoughts. They influence their behavior and character and mold them into the people they become. Their hem, their concern, is the desire to achieve these objectives and these goals. People's concerns range from the noble and lofty to the base and the depraved, in fact. Some people concern themselves with attaining academic success, contributing to the human project of developing this world and reforming it and benefiting others. Others concern themselves with joy and entertainment. So their sole endeavor is to follow TV shows and watch movies and watch football games and cricket and go to the theater because what concerns them is their joy and their entertainment and their enjoyment. And most people are concerned with satisfying their appetites. Food and drink and clothes and sex and a home and a car. The list goes on. Those who consider the fulfillment of these appetites as a priority busy themselves with acquiring them regardless of the source. No thought is given to the source of the wealth and how it is spent. No, so no thought is given to the avenue through which their sexual desire is gratified. This is a very brief mention of the main concerns that people possess. And it is true that people possess multiple concerns. We are all concerned with more than one thing, but we manage these multiple concerns in general by prioritizing the most important of them over others. So more time is given to studies, for example, if the individual is concerned with academic success, for example. And the more important and the more pressing the concern is, the more we sacrifice for it. Hence the one who's occupied with amassing wealth, great fortune, sacrifices his sleep and will sacrifice his entertainment and will sacrifice food and drink and will sacrifice time with their family in the pursuit of what they consider to be an important achievement which is gathering wealth. And absolute concern Concern, the concern over something in the absolute sense is manifested in the person sacrificing everything to achieve that objective. Therefore, we see absolute materialists sacrificing human lives, animals and plants, the environment and the climate, even their spouses and their children, everything and everyone, to reach their selfish objectives. 
We also see, and we may even know people, who fall head over heels for a woman, or a woman who falls head over heels for a man. To please them, money is spent, health is exhausted, friends are ditched, family are abandoned, and even sanity and reason are surrendered, whereby the individual becomes a slave to the significant other due to their sole concern being gratifying and pleasing the other. How does this relate to the topic of our khutbah today? That we alluded to with the hadith at the start of the khutbah. These are examples of how, of how people could sacrifice so much to what are essentially worldly concerns. Wealth, power, status, fame, family are all world bound. They are limited, they are finite, and they are temporary. How can somebody place these concerns above what is limitless, infinite, and eternal? All of us say, I want to go to paradise. I want to go to Jannah. But there is a difference, a great difference between wanting something and being concerned with something. So many people want to get fit and lose weight. If they don't watch what they eat, and if they do not exercise regularly, then they are not truly concerned with healthy living. Everybody wants, or some people want to, read a book a week. I want to read a book a week. If time is not managed, and a portion of the day is not allotted for the person to read in, then their life will pass by. The years consuming their bodies and their, and their intellects and their knowledge erodes with age. Why? Because they wanted something, but they were not concerned with achieving it. So we all want Jannah, but how many of us are truly concerned with attaining Jannah? How many of us are truly concerned with seeking Allah's pleasure, His countenance, His mercy and His forgiveness? How can I make the hereafter my greatest concern? Is a question every one of us must ask. Because the one who is concerned with the Akhirah, Allah guarantees for him His hereafter and guarantees for him this life. So how do I concern myself with the akhirah, with the hereafter? The one who is concerned with something, he is occupied with thoughts of that thing. If one is concerned with the akhirah, with the hereafter, their thoughts, their thoughts are only of the hereafter. The their decisions that they make are all influenced by how they would affect our hereafter. The believer recites, And the hereafter is better for you than the first. The hereafter, the next life, is better for you than the first, the first life, the life of this world. The believer recites these words and reflects over them, realizing the reality of this fleeting, temporary world. And compares it with what is in fact incomparable of the life of eternal joy and felicity and bliss in the hereafter and chooses the hereafter over this temporary short and delusional life, a life of delusion. The believer makes his choice based on what Allah has commanded. Allah has said, مَنْ كَانَ يُرِيدُ حَرْثَ الْآخِرَةِ نَزِدْ لَهُ فِي حَرْثِهِ وَمَنْ كَانَ يُرِيدُ حَرْثَ الدُّنْيَا نُؤْتِهِ مِنْهَا وَمَا لَهُ فِي الْآخِرَةِ مِنْ نَصِيبِ Whoever desires the harvest of the hereafter, meaning the reward of the hereafter, we increase for him in his harvest. <coughs> and whoever desires the harvest of this world, meaning only seeks to make reward, uh, only seeks reward and provision in this life only, and shows no care and concern for the next life 
And whoever desires the harvest of this world, we give him thereof, Allah will give. But there is not for him in the hereafter any share, no portion in the hereafter. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, مَنْ كَانَ يُرِيدُ الْحَيَاةَ الدُّنْيَا وَزِينَتَهَا نُوَفِّ إِلَيْهِمْ أَعْمَالَهُمْ فِيهَا وَهُمْ فِيهَا لَا يُبْخَسُونَ أُولَئِكَ الَّذِينَ لَيْسَ لَهُمْ فِي الْآخِرَةِ إِلَّا النَّارُ وَحَبِطَ مَا صَنَعُوا فِيهَا وَبَاطِلٌ مَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ Whoever desires the life of this world and its adornment, we fully repay them for their deeds therein. The one who wants the dunya, the world only, and does some good deeds, Allah will pay them back in this life. Only in this life. And they therein will not be deprived. Allah will not deprive them. He is just and he is fair. Those are the ones for whom there is not in the hereafter but the fire. And lost is what they did therein in the world. And worthless is what they used to do. It's worthless because it did not, its benefit did not extend to the hereafter, which is eternal. So therefore, the temporary life compared to the eternal life is worthless and insignificant and cannot even be mentioned in the same breath. If we favor this life, wanting only the world and the reward and the provision, the rizq of this life, okay, Allah will give it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give it. But he will not give, he will not give the one who desires only this world, the eternal prize. And you'll get in this life what Allah has written for you anyway. Allah has said, مَنْ كَانَ يُرِيدُ الْعَاجِلَةَ عَجَّلْنَا لَهُ فِيهَا مَا نَشَاءُ لِمَنْ نُرِيدُ ثُمَّ جَعَلْنَا لَهُ جَهَنَّمَ يَصْلَاهَا مَذْمُومًا مَدْحُورًا Whoever should desire the immediate, meaning this life, this immediate life, we hasten for him from it what we will give to him, we in, uh, what we will give, what we will to whom we intend. Meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, whoever seeks this life, we will give him what we will, what we intend to give in this life. Meaning that Allah will give you what he has written for you anyway, if all you seek is this life. Then we have made for him hellfire, which he will enter, burn, censured and banished. وَمَنْ أَرَادَ الْآخِرَةَ وَسَعَى لَهَا سَعْيَهَا وَهُوَ مُؤْمِنٌ فَأُولَٰئِكَ كَانَ سَعْيُهُمْ مَشْكُورًا But whoever desires the hereafter and exerts the effort due to it, he desires the hereafter and works for it, not just I wish for Jannah, I wish for Jannah. No, and he exerts the effort. He works for Jannah. He's concerned day and night with attaining Allah's pleasure and his gardens and works for it while he is a believer. It is those whose effort is appreciated. To each category, the, ca the first category, the ones who seek the world, and the second category, who seek the hereafter. We extend, we give, Allah gives to both categories, to these and to those, from the gift of your Lord. And never has the gift of your Lord been restricted. But look how we have favored in provision some of them over others. But the hereafter is greater in degrees and greater in distinction. Both the world and the hereafter are promised to the believer, my dear respected brothers and sisters. There is no trade-off. But the deprivation of the hereafter is for those who don't work for it. They are truly deprived, those who only wished and wanted Jannah, but made no preparation for it, and they were not concerned with it. And how can someone be concerned with something he knows nothing about? It's imperative for us to, to read about the hereafter, and to listen to reminders and to talks about the horrors, the horrors of death, of the grave, of the resurrection, of the gathering of the account the hisab of the sirat the bridge of hellfire these are deterrents they deter us from disobeying allah and likewise it's imperative for us to read and to listen to reminders about the state of the believer at death in his grave when he is resurrected when he is gathered who is he gathered with when he is accounted when his accounts uh, uh, when his account is established over the Sirat 
and in paradise, these are incentives. Incentives for the person to work and concern themselves with the akhirah. My dear respected brothers and sisters, knowing the reality of this world in comparison with the hereafter allows us to put this dunya into perspective. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud reports that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam slept on, slept on a reed mat, a weaved mat, rough and coarse. And when he got up, it had marked his blessed side sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Abdullah began to wipe over his side and he said to him, O Messenger of Allah, would you not allow us to place something, a cover for you over this mat? And the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Mali walid dunya. إنما مثلي ومثل الدنيا كراكب استظل تحت شجرة ثم راح وتركها. He said, "What is the world to me? What What is the world to me? Verily, the example of this world and myself is like that of a rider who seeks shade under a tree. Then he moves on and he leaves it. This life is short." And he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he knew the lowliness of this world compared to the magnificence of the hereafter. So he sacrificed everything in pursuit of the akhirah, in pursuit of the hereafter. The dunya, my dear respected brothers and sisters, is truly insignificant. It is worthless. And that is why Allah provides from the dunya for the righteous and the wretched alike. There is no value to the dunya except what we place upon it. There is no true value to it. It is in fact trivial and petty. It is weak and it is submissive to. The dunya is weak and submissive. And please remember this fact about the dunya. If you run after the dunya, it will flee from you and you will never catch it. But if you leave the dunya and abandon it, it will then follow and run after you. That is the dunya. The dunya is a slave and it is not a master. But if you allow it to govern you, then it becomes your master, a master that you can never reach. This reality, many people do not know. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, وَمَا الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا مَتَاعُ الْغُرُورِ And the life, and what is the worldly life? What is the life of this world? Except the enjoyment of delusion. Mata'ul ghurur, the enjoyment of delusion. The, some scholars said Allah likened the dunya to drunkenness. To drunkenness. The drunk he drinks to escape his worries. But when he is inebriated, he forgets his worries temporarily. But what is actually occurring is his worries are multiplying. Are multiplying. And when he wakes up, he meets a reality that he does not wish to face. Those who are immersed in the dunya, chasing after it, fighting over it, are but drunk. If we do not wake up now and realize the reality of this dunya, its weakness, its temporary nature, then only death will wake us up. And when death wakes us up, it is too late, my dear respected brothers and sisters. So let us favor the hereafter, the akhirah over the dunya, and make it our sole concern. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said about the, uh, in the hadith that we started with, he whose concern is the hereafter, Allah will place his prosperity, his richness in his heart. Even if he is the poorest person, he feels like he is the richest. There is blessing in his wealth, even if he's not rich. There is blessing in his health, even though he's not hugely athletic. There is blessing in his family. There is, he, enjoys, he enjoys peace. He enjoys happiness, satisfaction, contentment. He doesn't fear over his rizq. So Allah spares him anxiety and worry, and he sleeps. And he sleeps sound sleep, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed prosperity before him. This feeling of security is the one that the righteous scholars of the past spoke of when they said if the kings and their sons knew what we experience from delight, they would fight us with swords for it.
The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam continues and gathers for him his affairs. Everyone wishes to have a financial advisor who can tell him where to put his money, where to invest. If you have multiple debts, someone who can consolidate, your, your, uh, 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 consolidate all of your debts into one debt that you pay off. Huh? Everybody wishes for someone to manage their home, to help them bring up their children and to educate them. Everybody wishes for help. We have many affairs to think about this and to think about that. Imagine Allah manages your affairs for you. How would your state then be when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he, he is in charge of your, of your finances. He is in charge of your home. He is in charge of your family. He gathers for you your family, your wife, your husband, your children, your siblings, your friends, your business associates and your allies. And then there is no deficiency because nothing passes him subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whereas everything passes us except very little. And the world comes to him subdued. He gains his share in the dunya with little effort. Very little effort. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala submits the dunya for him. It comes to him subdued and surrendered for him to do with it as he wishes. And truly he will do with it as what pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in fact, this reward... This reward is multiple fold if we were to look at it closely. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring him the dunya without much effort. Meaning that he will be sufficed his needs and have more time now to do righteous deeds. Time that he wouldn't have had had he had to work to attain his provision. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to him, no, here's the dunya for you. Here's the dunya for you because you favored me and the hereafter over the dunya, so I will bring it to you weak, and you can do with it as you please, and spend more time seeking me, my believer. That is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's promise, and this is confirmed by Allah's verse, and Allah increases those who were guided in guidance. My dear respected brothers, gather your affairs into one affair, the affair of the hereafter, as the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, whoever focuses on only one concern, the concern of the meeting, the meeting with Allah, Allah will suffice him for his concerns in this world. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those who concern ourselves with him and only him and the hereafter. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us see the reality of this world. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inspire us and reveal to us the realities of the akhirah so that we may seek it and so that we may prioritize it and so that we may exhaust ourselves to pursue it wal aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullaha li wa lakum fastaghfiruhu innahu huwal ghafurur rahim inna alhamdulillah wa kafa wa salatu wa salam ala al habib al mustafa wa ba'd Conversely, my dear respected brothers and sisters, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he continues in the hadith and he says, and he whose concern is the world, he whose concern is the world, Allah places his poverty before his eyes. Despite his wealth, he lives in fear of poverty and the fear of poverty is poverty. The fear of poverty is poverty even if the person is rich. His existence, the one who thinks only about the dunya and cares not for the akhirah. His concern is wealth. His concern is worldly material possessions. His existence is one of fear and anxiety. Fear always of losing his money, of losing his fortune. He's never satisfied and content. He may have thousands upon thousands, millions upon millions, or even billions. But how are you today? Mm. Uh, things could be better. Thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for how you are. Never satisfied and content, bitter and resentful and then depressed. And disperses for him his affairs. shamla, And Allah will disperse his affairs. He'll run after this business partner and this business associate, pleading and groveling for investment and spending sleepless nights thinking about his business. Even if he is rich, even if he is rich at home, his wife, uh, his wife, is, uh, uh, his wife makes his life a hell and she if she is rich her husband will make her life a hell children who are 
on drugs, addicted, uh, 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 who are drinking or addicted to drugs. These are just examples, examples of how one's affairs can be in disarray, in disarray, when their concern is the dunya and only the dunya. And will receive nothing, as the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, and will, and will receive nothing from the world except what was decreed for him. His over-eagerness for the adornment of the world at the expense of the hereafter, earning from lawful and unlawful alike, will be of no avail. His provision is pre-decreed, and it's in Allah's hands. But he thought that it was his wit and intelligence and effort that gave him his provision, not Allah. So then, he relies upon himself. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala leaves him to roam aimlessly like cattle, grazing in the land head lowered and submissive humiliated by the dunya that is itself despicable so then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will despise him as he despises the dunya the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said man tasha'abat bihi al-humum fi ahwal dunya lam lam yubali allah fi ayy awdiyatihi halak and whoever disperses his concerns among the matters of the world, it does not matter to Allah in which valley he meets his demise. Allah will leave him. Go and work for your dunya. You will only get what I have written for you and you will toil and struggle like an animal and in the end you have nothing. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those who possess the dunya with our hands. Ali radiallahu anhu, he said, grasp the dunya by your hand. It will submit itself to you. But do not hold it with your heart, for it will submit you to it. My dear respected brothers and sisters, work for this dunya as though you will live forever, but work for the hereafter as though you will, as though you will die tomorrow. This advice was also the advice of Ali radiallahu anhu, who knew the reality of this world. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to allow us to see the reality of this world and to allow us to shun it and to renounce it without neglecting our responsibilities and our dependence. For Wallahi, the one who gives up this dunya, caring not for it, Allah will bring it back to him. Allah will bring it back to him in a greater state than he would have, than he would have been given it had he toiled and struggled for it. هذا وصلوا وسلموا على خير الأنام فإن الله أمركم بأمر بدأ به بنفسه وثنى بملائكة قدسه ثم بكم أيها المؤمنون فقال جل من قائل إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين وأذل الشرك والمشركين وأعني بفضلك كلمتي الحق والدين اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه عباد الله رحمكم الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون وأقم الصلاة